So I'd like to first talk about the reasons that I started gaining doubts about Amazon as a business model. And then let's go over some of the real information that led me to that decision. And then also what is the counter argument? And then by the end of this video, if you do stick around, uh, I'm going to be telling you exactly the sequence that I'm going to be taking, how I'm going to be launching my product, and also how I solved some of the issues and the cons column of Amazon. So the first one is ads and traffic, right? If we were to say we were going to be selling like a um, let's think of something random really quickly. If you guys can just do me a huge favor and leave a like on the video, it helps me so much as a small YouTuber trying to grow helps me with the algorithm. So I appreciate it. And as a thank you for doing that, here is a picture of a cute pig. Okay. We're going to use this as an example. Say that I created a vastly better product in this area. Somehow I did that. Maybe it's a better quality wood or it's a cooler design on there or whatever it is. It holds twice as many. Then I want to go and I want to advertise, AKA market, gain traffic, collect emails and start building my brand. Amazon makes that incredibly difficult. Okay. So Amazon just wants you to list your products, use their internal ad services, AKA PPC, pay-per-click advertising, and then grow everything from there. They don't like the idea of working with other companies, working with you on your website, letting you capture customers' emails. Um, that's, that's not their gig, right? They are like, we're going to do everything for you. We're going to ship it. We're going to fulfill it. We're there are our customers. We're going to just show your product to our customers. and You're going to be able to make money from that. Um, so that was where I started to get like a little like, eh, you know, eh, do I want, do I want to keep doing that? Like if I really want to build a real brand next five year, five year goal, right? Eight figure company. I own it. I have the emails of all the customers. We have an email list that goes out to them. They read our blog posts. They like our social media page. Is this really how I get there? So I started asking those deeper questions of like, am I doing the right thing now? Even though I can make money doing this, is it the right thing to do to get to where I ultimately want to be? And that was one of the things that started making me go, eh, no, not really. Versus if I sell on something like Shopify, again, what I mean by that is just my own website. Sell on my own website, I'm fulfilling orders directly to customers. Okay, they're all my customers, they're on my email list. They are um, seeing only my products. So that was a huge one, right? If I, if I go to Amazon and type banana rack, or I come from an ad and I come to Amazon and I see banana rack, I see all of these other options, okay? Now pause right there, because that was one of the things that I got, not I got wrong, but it changed, right? So as I was making these decisions of figuring out where I wanted to sell, when you sent a Facebook ad, a TikTok ad, a Instagram ad, a Google ad from one of those destinations to Amazon, boom, we're over here. And I went to their, like say, this was my product. I sent an ad here. There would be competitors sponsored products on my ad page. So I was essentially paying for traffic, get to a place where people could still pick another product. That doesn't make any sense right? I don't want to pay for ads for someone else's product. I don't want to pay for ads for amazon.com. I just want to sell my specific product. And literally, I think a month ago, that all changed. So now you get your own landing page free from competitors on amazon.com if you're sending external traffic to your own listing. So huge counterpoint right there, right? That's an, an amazing upside because now I can go out all the other places like Instagram, Facebook, and all the places where there are traffic for the product that I want to sell, customers that I want to eventually have in my ecosystem, and I could bring them to Amazon and just show them my product. So that's, that's a good thing for Amazon. So now that we're moving into good things for Amazon, let me go to the next thing, which is conversion rate. When I send a customer to my, let's say that we're selling this chair thing, the chair store, right? If I send a customer here, about on average industry standards can be one, 2% of those customers, if you're lucky, are gonna convert if you have a really highly optimized web page and a product that they want that they're hungry for. And one or 2%, you, send, you pay for 100 clicks with ads, you might make one sale. Um, and those are people who are actually in the market for this. That's not cold. Uh, it could be better. So this is where it's like, uh, it's too general, but let's just go with the general numbers. So one or 2% versus if you send someone to Amazon and they already want this product, they, they found it on the same ad, but they come here and they see it with prime one, two day shipping. They're on amazon.com. Their cards already plugged in 10 to 20% conversion rate, 10 to 20 times the number of customers will purchase your product on Amazon because of what? 
Well, big one is the lack of effort that it takes to purchase it. How many Prime accounts are there in the US at this point? I don't have that statistic, but it's ridiculous. Almost everyone, almost every family has it, like more than 50% by far. So they land here, they just hit buy now and they're done, it's it's over. They don't have to you know, think of, do I trust this website? Do I wanna go through, do I, oh, I don't have my wall on me, it's downstairs. That could ruin a sale and it does ruin sales. When they come to Amazon, it's right here. Boom. So all of your paid traffic combined with the fact that the conversions are higher combined with the fact that now you get your own landing page on Amazon made me go, oh, you know what? Okay, there's still this problem with collecting emails, but the ads and the traffic thing solved itself. Is there a way that I can fix the emails thing? Yes, there is. Like I said, stick around to the end. I figured that one out as well. So another good thing about Amazon. So banana rack, we search banana rack. There's a really interesting story that I heard. I forget where I heard this. I want, I want to say it was probably $100 million offers, but it was a, you know, a business class. The teacher says, if you can have one thing, you know, a characteristic of your customer, what would you want if you had a hot dog stand? Everyone gets to pick something. Who makes the most sales? Uh, do you want the best location? Do you want the best hot dogs? Do you want what? And really, uh, the moral of the story is you want hungry customers. If you're the only place in town selling a hot dog at 1 a.m. and a football game lets out, um, that is definitely from Alex Ramosi, that example, you're going to sell out. You're going to make tons of money. You're going to absolutely do amazing because the crowd's hungry and you're the only one in town. So what do we want on Amazon? Well, we want a hungry crowd. So what we need is to get in front of people that are already looking for something. That's why Amazon's so great because with ads in a Shopify store, you're not getting in front of customers that already know what they want. Most of the time you're just intercepting them and going, hey, do you want this? Hey, this is a problem you might have. We have a solution, but they're not actively searching it out. When someone comes to Amazon, they search banana rack, they're actively looking for a solution to a problem, which is they need to hang their bananas. So they're gonna pick one of these most of the time. You know, a lot of the people that search this might get distracted, but almost everyone that searches this is gonna end up picking one of these and purchasing them. Um, so when we look at what I think we were talking about this one right here, organic rank number one, that is the third point of, or second or third point, I forget what we're on, of why I like Amazon so much is your sales compound onto each other and they keep making your listing higher up in the search so that the hungriest customers see your product first. End of story. If you win and you're successful on Amazon, it's self-fulfilling that you get better and better and sell more and more. As long as you have some reason to separate yourself from everyone else and you're not just a commodity and someone can't just crush you on pricing, which again, I have also figured out. So people are going to buy your product that's gonna push you higher in rank, organic rank, it's the second or third, like I said, I forgot we're on, reason why Amazon is really cool and why I would consider listing on Amazon for my new brand. Next one is pay-per-click advertising. Conversion rates on Amazon ads are gonna be a lot better than they are on a Facebook ad, Instagram ad, or a Google ad because of, uh, again, it's a little broad, but for the most part, yes. Because of the fact that they're already looking for that thing and you're intercepting them in the middle of a hot search, right? They're actively, they wanna buy something. You don't go on Amazon unless you wanna buy something. There's something in your mind. If they're looking for banana rack, I advertise for banana rack right here. I show up in front of them or I take the, the brand section and I show them a couple ones with marble bases. These ones are much nicer. Okay, they, they select one of those and they buy it. So PPC is a little easier because you're intersecting, intercepting, hopefully not intersecting, um, you're intercepting people that are already hungry and you're putting a product in front of them. And if it's truly a better product like this one might be, and then they're more likely to buy it. The next one would be the one to two day prime shipping. So one of the key components of value is time delay. So if you have a very high time, say very high nowadays might be seven days. So seven days from your Shopify store, even if it's free shipping to get it to the customer, well, if I can go get something even similar on Amazon and it's gonna come tomorrow, get it as soon as tomorrow, or I can get it as soon as Wednesday, two days from now, then I'm gonna do that, right? You, that alone just increased the value of my product because it's, you know, if it's on Amazon, it might be seen as more valuable because I can get it quicker, right? I'm reducing the amount of time delay for that customer. So one to two day Amazon Prime shipping is incredible and it's gonna make you more sales. So, so far Amazon's stacking up pretty good. Uh, the, the last part I would say that's great about Amazon is you don't have to overthink it. Put it on Amazon, start capturing sales. 
if you're making a lot of sales and you're having trouble capturing emails or building the customer base, that's a good problem to have because you're making a lot of sales and you want to capture more of the customers. If you're on Shopify and your ads suck and you're not making sales, you don't really have anywhere to go. You can't go, oh, well, let's figure out how to get our Amazon customers to turn into our customers instead of just being a one-time transaction on Amazon. You don't have any of that. You just have a storefront that's not making sales and you're trying to figure out advertising, which is an incredibly difficult thing to figure out, especially as a, you know, someone that's new to it with a small amount of budget, trying to bootstrap it, you're gonna blow through your ads pretty quickly, your budget, and be left with a product that's not selling on a random website. And again, oh, drop my pen. This is all just my perspective of these things. Many of you who have Shopify stores or Amazon FBA stores may agree or disagree with some of these points. And quite frankly, uh, you should. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. Transparency, uh, thoughtful disagreements and different perspectives. End result is much better um, avenue to get to the goal that you want to achieve. Now, I told you if you stuck around to the end, I would provide you with the template that I figured out for building your brand being the best one on Amazon and still capturing customer emails before going to Amazon. And it all has to do with the fact that if you were selling on Shopify, all of your sales would be coming from influencer shout outs and ads. No one is finding your website organically for years. So knowing that if you're already on the edge thinking I might make my own website, which you should, by the way, when I say sell on Amazon, that doesn't mean you don't do this means no, you also have a website and it's a beautiful website, but when someone goes to click to buy is a link or a button with a link under it that brings you straight to your Amazon, brings them straight to your Amazon listing. Okay, which again, theoretically, that's a good question. Uh, it should be private. Yeah, by the new logic of the ads coming from external websites to this doesn't show competitors, it should be the same for a website. If you have insight on that, I'm not 100% sure on that one. If it's not an ad, but it's just coming from your website. Let me know down in the comments. Okay, so there's actually two easy ways that you can get around this whole Amazon's customers or Amazon customers, they're not yours. The first way is if you are already planning on using external traffic outside of Amazon, which like I am going to be doing, I'm figuring out influencers, figuring out ads, that's gonna be one of the big things that I'm changing going forward. I am going to send them to my website first for something, right, a landing page that collects an email in exchange for a free gift or something of value, and then unlocks the product pop-up or the product button, which takes them to Amazon. So I've already captured the email. It's my customer now, right? Like I have their contact information, then they're going to buy. Okay, so add top of funnel sequence, meaning value exchange for an email, and then product comes up, and then they go to Amazon, and the conversion rate's higher on Amazon, so they purchase. And then as far as that Amazon interaction is concerned, it actually helps my Amazon ranking because I sent them from an external website to Amazon and then the customer bought, they get increased ranking and I still captured their email. Now, if you're not savvy with ads, you're not looking forward to figuring that out or influencers or anything, you just wanna sell on Amazon, you have a website but you're not driving traffic to it, it's just kind of for, um, if someone is curious about your brand and looks it up, there's information about your brand there, kind of like a brochure, well then do this sequence instead send the, not send. So you're making sales on Amazon, PPC, organic, etc. Make sure you have a very compelling insert card or free gift or something, a QR code that prompts them to go back to your website or go somewhere for an add-on item, right? So it's like, instruction, like instruction manual is boring, but that kind of sequence. Now keep in mind, Amazon doesn't love when you're sending people um, away from their website and their you know, ecosystem with something. But if it's for brand support, it, it only makes sense, right? If someone buys a Dyson vacuum and then has questions about the Dyson vacuum, they're gonna go to Dyson.com, not back to Amazon.com. So I think it's, it's fair game. Now, Amazon might disagree. The TOS, like I haven't heard of anyone getting in trouble for um, basic support or offering things outside of um, what their product already is back on their own website. Just be careful with the way that you phrase it, but that's that's the sequence that you can then do, right? It's like customer buys, insert card, support go here, um, free gift that we included, scan this QR code, go here. And then the capture happens on your own website from your insert card, right? So you're not emailing customers from Amazon using Amazon's like, email campaigns from Jungle Scout or Helium 10, asking them for an email address to, or going to this place. Like, no, that's how you get like 
you know, your account in trouble because you're trying to divert traffic. What you do is just have them buy the product and then go back to your website. I found. Let me know down in the comments down below. Are you excited for anything that you're working on? Are you starting an FBA business? Are you starting an e-commerce business? I want to hear what you have to say. And if you need me to talk to you on the phone about anything, um, let you know what my thoughts are on what you're working on or if I have a different perspective, I do have a Patreon down below um, where people can come work with me one-on-one. -on -one. So check that out if you're interested. Other than that, just subscribe down below for free and keep getting these videos. Um, other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Later.